Do you want more realistic cameras inside of Blender, but you don't want to have to animate it yourself? In today's video, I'll show you a cool little visual effects trick that will give you just that. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you are interested in all of the amazing perks that we offer, I'll have a link down below. So today we're going to be using the power of camera tracking to go ahead and track some real world footage and bring that into a CG scene. If you are using a phone, I recommend that you use the Blackmagic camera app because it allows you to control a lot more things that the native iPhone camera app doesn't allow you to control. The biggest thing that we want to avoid is any motion blur. Uh, we can add motion blur in our CGI, but in order to have a seamless track, the less motion blur, the better. And so that is where we want to change our shutter speed all the way up. Of course, I highly recommend that you shoot your own footage for this tutorial, but I am providing the footage I'm going to be using in this tutorial for my patrons. And so again, check out the link down below. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some quick camera tracking. It should be super simple if you shot it correctly. We're going to go up to VFX motion tracking. Let's go ahead and load in our footage. Here we go. So here is our footage. Let's set scene frames prefetch. I'm going to set the match to previous frame, normalize and tracking settings extra to be 0.9 correlation. This is something I do regardless of anything that I'm doing in camera tracking. Next, if you're shooting in 1080p, you can set these pattern and search size to be here. That's totally fine. If you're working in 4K, I like to multiply these by two. Of course, uh, depending on how much movement you actually have, you might need to play around with some of these numbers, but these are kind of good rule of thumb here. Next, we want to go ahead and detect some features and open this menu down here. The threshold we're going to set to a 0.01 and then and we're going to set the distance to an 80 just so we have as many markers on our scene as possible. And so this is a good chunk. We're going to hit control T to track forward. As you can see, we're tracking throughout the clip. And then once it gets to the end, I also like to do a feature set at the end. So control shift T once we detect some more features there. And there you go. Now, if there are any parts of your clip that doesn't have features, you would go to that frame and do a new set of detect features and track it forwards and backwards. But this looks good down here. Next, let's do a quick solve. Now you can choose your A and B keyframe or you can let Blender choose it by hitting hitting keyframe up here. I'm going to choose my own just because it's super simple for this scene. I'm going to do 80 or sorry, 60 to like 90, just a nice 30 frame range in there. Uh, the reason I like to selecting it myself is because sometimes it takes a little long to actually manually or automatically select it on Blender. Then we're going to go ahead and refine everything here and solve our camera motion. Okay, so we got our first solve error. Now, if you're doing a visual effects shot, this solve error needs to be as low as possible. But since we're not doing visual effects, we don't care about the floor plane, anything like that. All we need to do is we need to know uh, that this number needs to be as low as possible and have uh, a lot of tracking markers in the scene here. And also this blue line down here needs to be perfectly flat. This is the solve error line. And so that is most important since, uh, again, we're going to be dealing with CGI, not uh, visual effects here. So we'll go ahead and go to clean up, clean tracks, and we're going to push this all the way up. Uh, let's deselect everything here first. So reprojection error all the way up and we're going to go ahead and delete some of those and resolve. This will just uh, make our solve error a little bit lower since we're only selecting the highest error tracks to delete. There we go. So we got a 2.16. Let's do it one more time. Try to push this down to like a, a 1.5 or lower is ideal. And... There we go. We got a 1.36. That is looking pretty good. Uh, if I was doing visual effects, I would want that a little bit lower, but this is totally fine for my scene. Let's come down here and go to the scene setup, set up background and tracking scene. Uh, now for this shot, I'm going to be importing my camera into another project to show you guys. So we don't really have to deal with any uh, of the kind of folders or anything that's set up here. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything besides the camera just so we have our camera up here and that is looking good. The only other thing that I want to go ahead and manually select is just our floor plane of our scene, uh, just so we can give as much information as possible uh, because most likely we want the floor plane to match. So I'm just going to select three points on our floor. I'm just using the countertop since it's nice and flat up here and we're going to hit floor up there and there you go. Now you can see our floor is matching there and that's pretty much it. We'll come back out to the layout tab and now you can see our camera is moving along uh, realistically with the scene. It's probably not perfectly tracked uh, uh, for for a visual effect shot, but for what we're using it for, it's perfect. So let's go ahead, let's save the project. So I'm just gonna save it in whatever uh, file that you want. Most importantly though, is we have this camera here. If we go to the constraints property, you can see the uh, camera solver. This is what Blender uses to camera solve. Unfortunately, in any other project, we're not gonna have any of that solved data into it. It's only baked into this specific Blender project. So what we have to go ahead and do is constraint to F curve. So we're gonna press that. And now you can see all of our camera information has been saved to keyframes down here. And so that is going to allow us to transfer this camera to a different project. So we'll save this file. And for demonstration purposes, I'll come up to new general, uh, just make a new kind of blank blender script. And let's go ahead and import in our camera. So file append, and then we're going to locate that blender file we just made. 
Okay, so click this and we're gonna go into object and select our camera, I'll pin that into the scene. And there you go, now we have the camera into the scene and it, it has the same exact motion baked into keyframe, so that is looking good. Now, in order to actually go ahead and move around uh, the camera, what we need to do is I'm gonna add a new empty object to just plain axis is fine. I'm gonna select the camera first and then select the empty second holding shift. We're gonna hit control P to set parent to object keep transform. And now if we select our empty up here, we can move around the actual camera position and it'll still be accurately animated with our keyframe. So that is looking good now. Uh, let's just do a quick demonstration. Say I want to have uh, kind of a table right here and say we have like Suzanne on top of the table or something like that. You know, I'm just going to do a very, very rough job kind of putting her up on this table. Say it's like a glass you know, museum and our artifact is our monkey here. Uh, and then we want our camera to, of course, be focused on the monkey. We don't need our background images anymore. That is kind of useless for uh, this shot right here. So we'll just delete background images there. And let's break a new window out here. So this one is in the camera viewport. And then this one over here, I'm gonna come out here and let's select our empty again. And gee, I'm just gonna move our thing. I notice uh, kind of my camera movement at the very end kind of focuses and hovers around a specific point. So we want that uh, specific point to be our monkey. So again, I'm selecting the empty, not the camera. This is very important. And let's maybe uh, shift it around a little bit and get the framing looking good. It's kind of annoying that you have to do it with the empty instead of doing it with the camera controls, but uh, it is all good there. And yeah, so something like that. And as you can see, my camera kind of focuses on the monkey. And now we'll play this little animation and see what we have. So we can see we play it. I kind of have a natural stepping motion. That'd be very hard to do if you're animating this yourself. But as you can see, we kind of go around the monkey. And this is very, very accurate, again, because we are basing this on realistic footage. The only thing that you want to make sure is that the in frame matches the in frame of your actual camera animation. So 230, that is looking good. The other nice thing about this whole process, I just quickly quickly want to show is that we can actually slow this down if we wanted to. Uh, that's a very nice thing about this process. Say this shot uh, needed to be like an extra five seconds long or something like that. What I could do is we'll go ahead and make this like a thousand frames or something like that with all of the key frames selected down here. So you can see all of them are yellow. I'm going to go to frame zero. And then what I can do is hit S when I uh, when my cursor is down in this window. If I hit S, I could stretch these out just all the way to however long you want it. And since Blender will automatically interpolate between the frames you can see now we still have smooth camera motion but everything is slowed down uh, x amount of times depending on how much you actually scale it by and it's actually giving us pretty good results and so this is where you can go in and get a little bit more fine-tune in the speed you can all the, uh, also do some speed ramps and stuff like that say if you wanted to start out slow in the beginning and then speed up at the end uh, but again all of this is based on accurate real world camera motion and so it's going to give you a lot of flexibility Okay, so that's about it. I know a quick tutorial today. Again, we have a Patreon and Discord. I would love to chat with you guys over there. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.